All right, hey everybody. So um, today I am going to talk to you about, once again, essay three, and about um, go over an example of what I'm looking for. All right, so you're very clear about that. Um, I'm going to talk about some research in it. I know technically based upon our um, schedule here, I had another possible lecture for the second, but I think I'm going to combine that with today's. And this might be our last visual lecture. All right. Um, so essay three is due on the 13th. You are to watch a film um, and you are to analyze it. And your analysis um, of that film should not be just on obvious stuff. OK, as I was discussing with someone today in an email, like uh, if you watch a film like Malcolm X, your analysis shouldn't be on how it's a civil rights film, because that's obvious. I mean, that's pretty much anybody watching can see that instead you need to go deeper you need to look into something that um is not so obvious okay and today i'm gonna go over an example of that uh, this is an analytical essay remember that you need to have three secondary sources for this essay make sure that um they're outside sources and that they're reliable sources academic sources go through Galileo don't don't go through basic uh, websites dot uh, com websites I want you to find secondary sources from um, Galileo all right now in this essay three uh, week seven essay three uh, file the very bottom I posted some stuff for you all right that I want you to read and look at the first one is Doc McStuffin's sample analysis. This right here is a PDF. I have it right here. Okay. And it comes from a book uh, that I'm reading. And um, this guy, uh, Kamal Bell, he, uh, he writes about how essentially Doc McStuffin's is the best TV show right now for children. All right. And he goes through a pretty long analysis of it, why it's really important especially to his children who are, who are black girls. All right. And, um, but it talks about how diverse it is and, uh, you know, the, the real social implications of the film that some people just might not really realize upon just watching it. Okay. Now this is not written in a way in which you should imitate. It's very first person. It's very conversational. It's, he uses no resources or anything. So I don't want you necessarily to mimic his style. But to get, I just want you to read it to get an idea of the type of stuff that you're doing. All right. Now, in terms of actually understand, of actually understanding what I'm looking for in this assignment, all right, I have posted for you final essay sample, which I'm going to go over today. This final essay sample, uh, which is not this document, but it's on here. Okay. This is exactly what I'm looking for, all right? This is a film analysis on Moana, all right? I'm gonna read it to you today and kind of go over uh, some of the things that the writer does in this. But before I figure I read this to you, and before you read this, you might need to understand uh, the film Moana if you've never seen it, okay? If you, have, if you haven't seen it and you have like Disney Plus, I'd say watch it, it's a fantastic film, it's great. Um, but if you don't, I did post this Moana film summary PowerPoint that I put together that we can use to uh, understand the basis of what Moana is about. I'm going to explain to you the story of Moana, and then we're going to read the analysis essay. All right. So um, Moana uh, begins with introducing this character of Tafiti. She's the mother goddess island. Who gives birth to other islands? This is Polynesian mythology, all right? She's a goddess who's also an, the mother island, an island. And the center right here is her heart that gives life to other islands. And so this is their creation myth. And in this creation myth, you have this big old buff uh, demigod named Maui, who um, he's a male. And he, he uh, enters deep into the island of Tafiti, all right? to steal her power. This little right here is a little, is the heart of Tafiti. It's this right here, the spiral, which creates all this life. 
So after he, he, he steals that and he leaves, he's confronted by Taka, which is described as this powerful demon. Okay, and Taka attacks Maui, defeats him, and sends him to, and, uh, to a deserted island way out deep in the ocean, all right, where he's, he's stuck forever, all right? And then after Maui's gone, this darkness in the world is created, and it just starts to spread to all these other islands. And when it reaches people's islands, it, it essentially kills off all the, all the fish and corrupts the, um, their fruits and their crops. So Moana, she's an island princess who, who feels as if she's being called to go find Maui, find, uh, take the heart to Fiti, and uh, restore it. Uh, the idea is that if maybe if they can get back this green jewel that uh, Maui steals, send his hand right here, that he steals, that uh, the darkness will go, away, will go away. So she... Um, she goes and, oh, I, I kind of missed one thing. She goes and she, she finds Maui and saves him from this island and, and demands that he go and help her defeat, um, to go help defeat, to restore the heart of Tafiti. So um, in order to get to Tafiti, okay, um, they have to defeat Taka. Taka is this giant demon, which is what we saw over here, okay, who shows up after he steals the heart from Tafiti, okay, are we starting to see something here, Tafiti, he steals her heart, this giant demon comes out, sends him away, starts killing everything, uh, Moana saves him, saves um, Maui, and they go to try to take the heart back to Tafiti, but then they have to go through Taka, okay, and then it's when they're confronting Taka, this demon, that Moana realizes that Taka is defeat is Tafiti? Look right here. This spiral right here on Taka's chest is the same spiral that's here. Okay, so when Maui stole Tafiti's heart, she turned into Taka, and so Taka now, out of anger, is killing everything. Moana realizes that this is uh, Tafiti, so Moana sings to. Taka, and she says, they have stolen the heart from inside you, but this does not define you. This is not who you are. You know who you are. And she puts the heart of Tafiti back on. All right, Taka lets her place the heart back in her, and she transforms back into Tafiti. Very deep. Okay, so then Maui apologizes for what he did. She forgives him. She offers back his hook, okay? But he waits to take the hook until Moana has given, another girl has given him permission, okay? And then all is right in the world again. Uh, Tafiti goes back to sleep and darkness goes away and life is there again. Boom! There's the story. Great story, okay? So after going over the PowerPoint, understanding the story, we have sample essay. This essay um, is exactly how your essay should be. The only thing is that this essay is six pages long and yours only has to be, uh, no, it's not as long as yours should be. Yours should be four to five pages, which is how long this one is. So yes, this is exactly how your essay should be. Okay. Just by looking at it first, we have proper MLA formatting, Thomas, Rachel Thomas, Richard Byers, English 1102 summer, the due date, Okay, we have no extra spaces between the MLA heading and the title. We have no extra spaces between the paragraphs. Okay. And then at the very end, on its own page, page six, we have works cited page. All right. And see how they're all indented correctly? All right. And they're alphabetical order. All right. This is exactly how it should look. If yours is not like this, you will lose points just by looking at it. The first thing I do is just look at it. I don't even read anything, I just look. All right, so let's read about this person's analysis of Moana. Oops, this is called Moana Trigger Warning. Cool title. With the film Moana, Disney has replaced its classic story of white princess girl needing help from savior man and instead flips the story to show how women, 
need each other to deal with the masculine world. Disney set aside marriage and brought out a metaphor for sexual assault. This is a Me Too film that addresses the effects of sexual assault and how to come back from it. Maui rapes Tafiti, the mother island, and the movie is ultimately about Moana helping Tafiti to heal from her assault, but only after she helps Maui heal from his toxic masculinity and learn humility. The smooth round heart that is taken from Tafiti without her consent is a magical object capable of creating life. A clear standing for her womb, vagina, womanhood. But importantly, it is a thing that becomes worthless when it is removed from the goddess from whence it originated. Maui's fish hook, even if it weren't enormously phallus in its mere size and shape, becomes the representation of his masculinity, the thing that makes him awesome again, the source of all his power. Yet, significantly, it is Moana who sees that Maui is not, in fact, defined by his hook, and that the hook itself does not possess the power he needs to become a hero to all. He attempts to use his hook to fight off Taka in order to replace the heart, but is defeated multiple times, and his hook is eventually destroyed in the process. This is when the audience discovers that an act of violence cannot undo a violent act, only an act of love and compassion. All right, that's our introduction. All right, it, uh, it brings up all the main points that, that the writer is going to discuss further on, tells us what the story is about and what the analysis is about. The premise of Moana is that the demigod Maui, played to perfection by Dwayne Johnson, travels to Tafiti and steals her, quote, heart. Tafiti, the mother goddess, has the power to create life, and Maui is convinced that her heart will give him that same power. Using his giant fish hook, a clear metaphor for his masculinity, phallus, Maui violently prized Tafiti's heart from the middle of her spiral, located at the center of the mother island. However, once Maui takes the heart, a small smooth stone that is intricately carved with a spiral sword pattern, he discovers that it has lost all power, that it is just a rock. The mother island stands to spread death around to every island, and what is more, the stolen heart is now seen as a prized artifact for a whole ocean full of monsters, but mostly for the fearsome Taka, a demon of fire and lava. Taka rises once Maui steals the heart, and she is powerful enough to actually knock the fleeing Maui out of the sky and separate him from his magical fish hook dooming him to a thousand years of emasculated, non-magical solitude on a desert island. Uh, that should be deserted island. Moana, in an attempt to return the heart herself, discovers that Tafiti, the mother island, has sunk into the sea and re-emerged as, as the demon Taka herself. Tafiti's anger, sadness, and fear that resulted from Maui's attack transformed her into a monster of fire and lava, a beacon of death instead of a thing that creates life. In the article, Horror, Rage, and Defenses in the Symptoms of Female Sexual Abuse Survivors, Gerald Ellison discusses how, quote, residual rage and horror become confounded in female survivors of sexual abuse as women react with horror to their own cataclysmic rage. All right, so look, real fast, pause. Look, I don't just, this person doesn't just, doesn't just write, Ellison discusses how, because don't, we don't know who Ellison is, but instead we have, George Ellison is an author who wrote this significant article that relates clearly to this film. This, this, this article is not about the film, all right, but it's on subject about the way um, sexual abuse survivors feel and how they often feel full of horror, rage, and defense. It's in quotation marks because it's an article. Articles and poems are in quotation marks. Titles of films and novels and magazines are in italics. So this quote directly relates to why Tafiti is turned into Taka. Residual rage and horror become confounded in female survivors of sexual abuse. Okay. Tafiti's goddess personality is overshadowed by the rage that forms from the abuse at Maui's hands. She coats her heart in fire and ash so, so that no creature could come close to her to hurt her again. Once Moana sees that Taka and Tafiti are one and the same, she turns to the monster with compassion. With love. The climactic moment when Moana restores Tafiti is one of incredible beauty, but also incredible sadness, as any act of hard won forgiveness must be. Translated from the Polynesian language of Tuvodu, the choral lyrics read Let the tears fall down, my heart is filled with sorrow, for we have lost many loved ones, for we have lost. Moana is truly a powerful character, as she explains to Taka. 
They have stolen the heart from inside you, but this does not define you. This is not who you are. You know who you are. For Taka slash Tafiti, seeing and hearing Moana acknowledge her long lingering pain, hearing that it is not merely Tafiti who feels sorrow, but all of us who have lost without any conclusion or end or resolution, binds Moana and Taka in a community that the far distant, long dead island was desperate to discover. Indeed, the entire film could be considered an extended argument in connectivity, inequality, and the potential dangers of isolationism. Further, Moana reassures Taka slash Tafiti that her heart does not define you, that it is not who you are. Tafiti's loss and the terror of the memory of her violation consumed her, just as her protective lava spread and consumed all that she had created, and for a thousand years alone and frightened, Tafiti was unable to consider herself anything other than that which was used to contain the heart, used to contain that which supported life, used to be the vessel of creation. Okay, you can read more of this. Um, we're going to skip down a little bit. I want you to read this whole essay on your own because it's really good. Look at this final line. Taka, who's a symbol of the, quote, defenses employed to protect self and the result in rage being projected and horror retained in the self-representation, is able to diminish the defeat, to diminish and defeaty returns. See how these quotes are a part of this sentence. It's not just a quote. All right. They're, they become um, part of your main argument. And you have to remember, remember that you are analyzing. You are not summarizing. Like this. A major moment in that film is when Maui must accept that what he has done to Tafiti is wrong. Psychoanalyst Derek Hook writes that by elevating the phallus to the privileged position in society, male dominance is implicitly naturalized. Meaning that Maui doesn't think that what he has done is initially wrong, okay? Because he thinks that it's normal. See, we have an, ex this is an explanation to, uh, so people understand the importance of this quote. It's not just the quote, it's an explanation. Being a man in a male dominant world means that he can ex excuse his behavior as just men being men. The turning point of, for his character is when Maui must prove that he is worthy of forgiveness for his sexualized act of aggression against Tafiti. So long as his personality and ego rem remains inextricable from his fishhook, he is irredeemable, being separated from his hook for a thousand years, as he, in the film's beginning, has done nothing to diminish the centrality of his hook in his definition of himself. Okay, so you can read more about his about the analysis of, of Maui, as you should, okay? Um, and so the... Um, Paper goes on to talk about uh, the importance of forgiveness, the importance of why uh, Tafiti needs to forgive um, Maui in order to help her uh, better understand, I mean, better deal with her trauma. Um, this last paragraph has a quote discussing it. It says, um, of course, the lingering trouble, troubling, painful moment for me so for, and for so many others who are also triggered by the themes running the, throughout this film is the moment of forgiveness. Claire Drucker writes about many ways that people heal from sexual abuse, and this film addresses one of them, colon. Adults who have experienced sexual violence heal by seeking forgiveness. And then goes on talking about why Tafiti forgiving Maui is what helps her to heal. Okay. So look, also, look, we read a quote by Drucker, Ellison, and Hook. There are no authors listed on this works cited page that I did not address in my paper. Many people have are putting sources on their works cited page, but they're not quoting them in their paper, which means that it's as if it's not even there. I don't even acknowledge a source on your works cited page if you did not quote that person in your paper. You have to quote the person in the paper, okay? And you have to quote them correctly. Okay, so this is what I'm expecting from you in terms of your essay, all right? Read the whole thing. Make sure yours looks just like it, all right? And in fact, um, yeah. So um, make sure that yours looks just like this, that you are, in, you are incorporating a quote. You can write about, like I said, anything as long as what you're writing about isn't obvious. It's analytical. All right. 
This is difficult. It's going to take some work, but this is a college class. It's 1102. Um, it's important that we get to the next level as, um, as academic writers. Okay. All right. Reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm not getting any questions, really. Not many. Only just about explanations for the, for the work that you've submitted. So I don't mind looking over some things and, and to give you some feedback to see if you're doing it correctly. I'm just not going to edit an entire paper before you turn it in. All right. So let me know if you need anything.